Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Weekly Coder. I'm Chris, and we are going to pick up right where we left off, and I'll call this part two of the UI, because we've actually got some more UI stuff to do. If you'll remember, we left off last week with our um, game menu, right? We created this, and we made it so that we can pick between one and two players, which really doesn't do anything yet, but other than, you know, visually show us whether or not we've got one or two players selected. After that, uh, we load the game, the game starts, and everything is beautiful, all right? So what we're going to do today is we're going to go into the other scene. And I'm not going to download the new version of Unity just yet. Um, we are going to go into our level one scene. And we are going to flesh out some more of our UI. What that means is we're going to start adding all the uh, stuff here on the right hand side. The, uh, the high score, the score, the uh, player one, player two, um, the Pac-Man lives. And we're going to make all that work. Plus. When Pac-Man consumes a ghost, we're going to make it so that the uh, game pauses for the duration of the sound that's going to play when uh, Pac-Man consumes a ghost, and then uh, resumes. So, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our sounds folder, and uh, we have a new sound that we need to drag in, and it's called Consume Ghost. And we're just going to drag that in here. Okay, so we've got our Consume Ghost sound in here, and um, the next thing we need to do is we need to really quick add some UI elements to our game, all right? So in Canvas, the first thing we're gonna do um, is we are going to create a tag for all of these because um, we need to exclude these from the array when the, um, when the pellets and the Energizer pellets are added to the array as game objects on in the scene. So we don't want everything else in the scene to be added and we don't want to have an if condition for every single one of the canvas elements that we're going to add. So we're just going to create a tag and then reference just the tag. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to tag and we're going to create, we're going to go to add tag and we're going to click the plus sign and call this UI elements. Okay. And remember this is case sensitive. So when we reference this in our script, we have to remember to use the same case that we used when we created the tag. So what we're going to do in Canvas, we're going to right click and we're going to click on create UI or we're going to click on UI, get the drop down here. We're going to click on text. That's going to create a new text element. We're going to go ahead and drag the game view out so that we have a view of the game and the scene so that we can get some help with positioning. All right. So we've got this new text element here. And we are going to make this um, have, let's see here, what did I use? I'm going to use the font that we used for all the other ones, and that's this one here. And we're going to change the font size to 28. And for this one, we're going to change the color to red, like a, like a dark red, sort of like that. And we're gonna call this one, we're gonna change the text to high score. Actually, I think we add it like this, high score. And so we need to make that one a little wider as well. So we're gonna set the width of this to be 288. And we're gonna set the X to be 339. And the Y will go with 298. Okay, that's gonna position that up here. And then to make our lives easy, we're gonna start naming these two. So this will be high score. And then we're gonna duplicate that. So we'll select it in the scene view. And we're gonna press Command D to duplicate. And we're gonna drag it down. And the high score text, uh, we're gonna put at a Y of 251. We are going to right align that and we are going to change the width to 200 and we're going to change this to say 10,000 and we're going to change the color to white. Okay. And now that we've got that, um, we need to create a one up text, one up score text, two up text, two up score text. All right. So we're going to just duplicate this and we're going to drag it down to right about there. 
and we're going to call this one up and we're going to left align it and we're going to change the color to red so let's see that red color is we're going to create a preset for that color so if just clicking this box will create a preset so that we can just go into here click on the color and click our preset color and it'll change it for us and by the way this one is we're gonna call it high score text this will be one up text and we need a one up score text so we'll duplicate the 10,000 score again and drag that down to right about here and we're going to set that to zero and we'll call this one up score text and we're going to highlight both of these duplicate drag them down to right about here and we'll call these two up score text and two up text and then we need to create um, two images and we'll do a right click on the canvas and do 2D or sorry a UI image and we're gonna move that to right about here and we're gonna set its sprite to be this Pac-Man sprite here okay and then we're gonna rename this to lives 2 and we're gonna set the width and height of these to 60 <clears throat> and we're gonna set the scale on the x-axis to negative 1 and then we are going to select it in the scene and duplicate it and then rename the duplication to lives 3 and then drag that one out a little bit and let's move these a little more to somewhere like here okay so that's for lives 3 and this is for lives 2 <clears throat> So now we just need to create one more and that'll be a text object. So UI text and we're going to name this one uh, consumed ghost score text. And that'll be the text that displays when the uh, ghost is consumed. So we're going to give that one a width of 100, a font size of 23 and change the font. We're going to make the color white. We're going to set the alignment to center and center. And then we're going to set the X and Y position to zero and zero, which it already is. So that'll be good. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to disable it so it doesn't show up because we only need to see it when a ghost is being consumed. All right. <clears throat> so that does pretty much everything we need for the UI. Um, now we just need to select all of these and go to tag and tag them with the UI elements tag that we created okay so now all of these are tagged as a UI element okay so there the next thing we actually need to do is going to be in our game menu script let's go in there first so we're gonna go to scripts and go to game menu And that opened up. All right. So, in game menu, we need to we need to be able to reference this is one player game variable in all of our other scripts. And the easiest way to do that is we're gonna create we're gonna make this a static variable, okay? So that we don't have to reference the script component from the game menu class. We can just or from the game menu um, component, which actually doesn't exist in the level scene, we can directly reference this from the game menu class because we're making this a static variable, all right? 
So we'll save that. And then um, we are going to go into, what did I say? Um, consumed, go to score text. We don't need to worry about that. Oh, um, we need to actually go into our game board and we need to create a whole bunch of variables. <laughs> Um, the first thing we need to do is we need to create a variable uh, private bool did start consumed okay equals false and then we are going to right here where we've got our public int score equals zero we're gonna create public int player one score equals zero and public int player two score equals zero. Um, so we're going to leave this score zero here for now so that we don't come up with any errors um, when I show you guys what we're about to do. Um, so we're going to keep this here for now, but we're going to get rid of it later. Okay, So just remember that. Um, we are going to create another variable and we're going to create it down here and it's going to be a boolean. And this one's going to be called is player one up, and we're going to set that to true, and that basically determines um, if it's player one's or player two's turn. Um, and then we're going to need to create another variable for our audio sound, so we're going to do public audio clip, and we're going to call this one uh, consumed ghost audio clip. And then we need to create a whole bunch of um, UI uh, properties, okay, so that we can reference those. So we're going to create a public text high score text object, um, public text player one up, public text player two up, public text player one score text public text player two score text and um, public image player lives two public oh, I spelled public wrong Pub like image player lives three and finally we need a public text consumed ghost score text okay so now with all of these um, we're gonna go ahead and go back into unity and assign these uh, UI elements really quick so let's uh, click back to unity and if we click at unity and go actually to the game object we'll see all these new properties all right so we need the high score text so we're gonna grab the high score text UI element drag that over here player one up player two up player one score one up score text um, two up score text uh, we've got player lives two and player lives three. Oops. Player lives three. And then we've got consume score text, consume go score text. There. All right. Um, the only other one we need is the audio file, and we'll go ahead and go into the sounds folder and grab that. That's consume ghost. All right. So now we are we're good to go. And right, we've got everything that we need done in unity actually so now we just need to worry about scripts so now um, let's go ahead and save our scene so save scenes and I'm gonna go ahead and save the project as well and let's go ahead and open up our game board script okay so in the game board script the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to add something to our start game method 
and we're going to do that before we do anything else. Um, we're going to say if game menu dot is one player game, and you see how we reference that variable just like that. Um, so that's really really cool. So if you make a variable static in a script, then you can access that variable. We're going to do player to up dot get component text dot enabled equals false player player one up I don't know yeah player two score text dot get component text dot enabled equals false and um, we're doing this because we're saying if it's a one player game then we don't want any of the two player stuff to show up because the two player is really never going to play so we might as well just not even show it and otherwise um, we do want to show those okay so we want to say player to up dot get component text dot enabled equals true and player to score text oops there to score text dot get component text dot enabled equals true and um, that's because we're grabbing the uh, text object okay so oh, sorry the text component from the text uh, UI element and we're setting its enable property to true and here we're setting it to false um, and then we need to check to see if player one is up and we're gonna do that right after we create a method okay? So we're going to create a method called, where do I have that here? Okay. I'm going to create a method called, and it's going to be an uh, enumerator. Okay. So I enumerator, enumerator, <laughs> um, start blinking. And we're going to pass in an object, the object that we want to blink. Okay. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to set yield return new wait for seconds. And we're going to set our blink rate at um, quarter a quarter of a second. Okay. And uh, then we're going to do blink text dot get component. So we're getting the text component of the text object that we're passing in as a parameter. And we're going to set its enabled property equal to the opposite of what it currently is. So blink text dot get component text dot enabled. So if it's enabled, we're going to set it to be not enabled. And if it's not enabled, we're going to set it to be enabled. That's a quick way to be able to actually, without doing an if statement to see if it's enabled, to then set it to disabled. We're, we're just basically setting it to whatever the opposite is of what it is. Okay, so we're just toggling it back and forth. And um, if, uh, after that, we're going to just start a coroutine. And the coroutine that we're going to start is the start blinking coroutine, and we're going to pass in our blink text object. Okay. And basically, so what we're doing is at the end of the blink, we're going to call this again, and we're going to set this enabled property. So if it starts off as true, we're going to call this again, then we're going to set it to false. We're going to wait a quarter of a second call it again, set it to true. So basically it's just an endless loop of on, off, on, off. So that's how we're gonna blink our text. And the reason that we need this is in the start method here, we've got start game, right? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, if is player one up, okay? Meaning that player one is playing, we're gonna start coroutine Now my iTunes library wants to load. Start coroutine. And we're gonna call start blinking. And we're gonna pass in player one up. Because that is what we wanna blink. Otherwise, we want to blink player two. So we're gonna do start coroutine, start blinking, player two up. And that's how the players are going to differentiate as to whose turn it is. Um, so is it player one's turn or is it player two's turn? If it's player one's turn, then the player one up text is going to blink. If it's player two 
uh, player two's turn, then the player two up text is going to blink. So um, since it's going to be player one's turn, and we've got this code here, we should be able to go into Unity and actually press the play button and see this blink happening right before our eyes. So let's have a look and see what happens. Let's press play. Yep, the game is not very happy with us right now. Okay, so, oh, you know what we forgot? We have to go back to our um, game board class and we have to actually go in here and see how we've still got um, o.name doesn't equal player text, o.name doesn't equal ready text. So we're going to get rid of all of that. And we're, instead, we're going to do o.tag doesn't equal uh, UI elements. Okay. That way, we're excluding all of these by just specifying this one tag. All right. So let's save and go back to Unity and press play. All right. So we've got our one up blinking, got our Pac Man, and we're good to go. All right. So let's go back to our game board script. And um, let's see, what do we want to do now? Uh, we're gonna create. We're gonna create our I enumerator method for um, our uh, basically for our starting consumed. Okay, so like when Pac-Man goes to consume a ghost. So the way that's gonna work is we're gonna do an I enumerator. I'm gonna call this process consumed after. And we're gonna pass in a parameter for the delay, okay? And then we're also gonna pass in a ghost, consumed ghost. So that'll be the ghost that is being consumed that we're gonna need to pass into this method. All right, so we're going to first do yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And we're gonna pass in our delay parameter. And um, this, process consumed um, before we go any further with it so that we don't confuse ourselves we're going to go ahead and create another method and this one is going to um, be called it's going to be right here actually I'm going to start it right here uh, we're going to call it we're going to make it public and it's going to be called start consumed so that starts the whole like consumed process and we're going to need to pass in the consumed ghost as a parameter, okay? And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check to see if not did start consumed <clears throat> so that the method only gets called once. And the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna say did start consumed equals true, all right? So now the first thing uh, we need to do when the ghosts become consumed is we need to pause all the ghosts, okay? So, um, we are going to do this. We're going to grab all the ghosts. So we're going to do game object, um, create an array. Okay. So it's game object dot find game objects with tag objects. Remember plural. And we're going to pass in ghost as the tag name. And we're going to do for each game object ghost and O. Okay, so every um, object in the array, we're going to assign it to be of type ghost, or sorry, game object as ghost. We're going to call it ghost. <laughs> so then we're going to do ghost.transform.getComponent ghost, and we're going to call the can move, and we're going to set that equal to false. All right. So then the next thing we're going to need to do is after we pause all the ghosts, we need to pause Pac-Man. So first we need to get a reference to Pac-Man. So we're going to do game object Pac-Man equals game object dot find and he's just called Pac-Man. And we're going to do pacman.transform.getComponent pacman 
dot can move equals false. So that pauses Pac-Man's movement. And um, <clears throat> then we're going to hide Pac-Man, okay? And we'll just do Pac-Man transform get component sprite renderer dot enabled equals false. And uh, then we need to actually stop our, actually we need to hide our consume ghost. So we're gonna hide the consume ghost. So basically we're just gonna do consume ghost dot transform dot get component. Um, yep, uh, sprite renderer dot enabled equals false. And then we are going to, oops, we're gonna to need to stop our background music. So um, that'll be transform get component audio source dot stop. And then we need to uh, we need to show the score, okay? We're gonna to need to show the score for the consumed ghost. And the score should um, be at the location of the ghost. The problem with this is that the canvas has its own coordinate system separate from the um, game that we're playing. So we have our world coordinate space and our canvas coordinate space. So we have to figure out a way to basically convert our canvas coordinate space to our world coordinate space. And the way that we're going to do this is we're going to start by getting the position of our ghost. So we're going to get, we're going to do position and we're going to do consume ghost dot transform dot position. Okay. So that gets our ghost's position. And then we are going to get our viewport point. All right. So vector two viewport point, and we're going to use camera dot main dot world to viewport point. Okay, and we're gonna pass in our ghost position. So that gives the, um, that basically gives us the coordinates of the ghost in the viewport, okay? So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do consume ghost score text, okay? And that's the um, text object that is going to uh, that is going to display our score value. Okay, we are going to do get component, and we're going to get the rect transform. And we're going to set the anchor min to the value of viewport point. And we're going to do the same thing again. Get component rect transform. Oops. And we're going to set anchor max viewport point. And the way the anchors work are from a um, zero to one in the X and zero to one in, in the Y. So, um, and that's why we centered our consume goes score text uh, UI element so that we can work with it the way that it needs to in order to be properly positioned. Um, we then finally will display so consumed goes score text dot get component text dot enabled equals true so that we can actually see it. Then we're going to play the consume sound and we just do that by uh, transform dot get component audio source dot play one shot and then we're just going to pass in the name so consumed ghost audio clip and finally, we want to wait for the audio clip to finish. So we're going to call our um, coroutine. So start coroutine. Um, process, oops. Process consumed after. 
And we need to pass in two things, a delay and the consumed ghost. So we're gonna set the delay to 0.75F and consumed ghost. Close that. And that method is finished. So start consumed is finished. So now we need to go down to our process consumed after. Okay, so this happens after the uh, sound plays. So basically after three quarters of a second, we're gonna do some more coding here. And the coding that we're gonna do there is basically undo everything that we just did. So we're gonna start with hiding our score. Okay, so we're gonna hide the score. Scroll up here. So we need to um, consumed ghost score text dot get component um, text, and we're going to set that enabled property to false. And then we need to show Pac-Man. So we're going to do um, game object. Pac-Man equals game object dot find and we're gonna find Pac-Man and we're gonna do Pac-Man dot get component or transform dot get component um, Pac-Man dot sprite renderer oops I totally did that wrong dot sprite renderer is what we're looking for dot enabled equals true. Um, then we're going to show our consumed ghost. And that's just consume ghost dot transform dot get component sprite renderer dot enabled equals true. And then we're going to resume all the ghosts. So the first thing we're going to do is going to create an array of all the ghosts. So game object O equals game object find game objects with tag ghost. Then we're going to do a for each game object ghost and O. And then we're going to do ghost uh, transform get component ghost dot can move equals true and then we need to resume pac-man so that's just pac-man dot get uh, transform dot get component um, pac-man dot can move equals true and then we just need to start our background music. So trans, oops, start background music. Uh, transform dot get component audio source dot play. And finally, we need to set um, did start consumed equal to false so that we may consume another ghost, okay? So, um, one thing we still need to do is we need to go into our start death um, method, okay, which is right here. And right after the, um, if, not, if not did start death, we're going to need to add a, um, a call to stop all coroutines because um, after you die, the second player should take over if you're playing a two-player game. And you want to stop all coroutines, meaning that blinking one that we're doing for uh, the first one. So stop all coroutines basically is going to stop all of them in their tracks. So there's not going to be no more blinking until we start the blinking again, which starts when the game restarts. So we're good. So we're going to stop all the coroutines. And we're going to check if the game menu dot is one player game um, player one up dot get component text dot enabled equals true else player one up 
dot get component text dot enabled equals true and player two up get component text dot enabled equals true. All right. So now that we've got all that in the game board, we need to actually go into our ghost script and we need to go into the consumed method. So we're gonna scroll a little bit here. All right, so we've got consumed. And right now we're calling consumed if the ghost is in mode of frightened and Pac-Man collides with the ghost. So, first thing we gotta check is if game menu dot is one player game, okay? If it's a one player game, we wanna do game object dot find game dot get component game board player one score plus oops plus equals 200 okay otherwise we need to do an else statement and we need to check to see if game object dot find game dot get component game board oops ah uh, get component game board dot is player one up okay so if it's player one's turn else it's player two's turn okay so if it's player one's turn we want to do game object actually We'll just copy this, okay? Because we want to increment only the player one score. Otherwise, we want to do game object dot find game get component game board dot player two score plus equals two hundred. Okay. So then finally, after the update animator controller we are going to add in, um, let's see, what we've got here. Yep, I'm gonna do game object dot find game dot transform dot get component game board dot start consumed. And we're gonna pass in this dot get component ghost. So basically what we're doing here is um, we're calling the start consume method that we created in our game board script and we're passing in this which is this right here the actual um, component ghost of the uh, parent class. So with this right here all we're doing is we're saying hey is it a one player game if it is then we know that we only need to update player one score. But if it isn't, then we need to check to see if the player one is currently playing. And if it is, then we update the player one score. If it's not, then we update the player two score. All right, so we're gonna save that. And we're gonna go into our Pac-Man class. And we need to go down to where the scoring happens. And right now that is right here in the consume palette. All right, so right here, this line, we're gonna get rid of it. It's game object dot find game dot get component game board dot score plus equals one. I'm just going to get rid of that. And we're going to put an if statement here. We're going to say if game menu dot is one player game. Um, otherwise, it's a two player game. So we need an else statement. <clears throat> if it's a one player game, then we're going to do game object dot find game dot transform dot get component game board dot player one score plus equals time and here in the all statement we're going to check if um, player one is currently playing so we're going to do if game object dot find game transform dot get, com get component game board dot is 
player one up. Else, it's player two's turn. If it's the first player, we're gonna just copy this line, put that in here. Second player, I'm gonna copy the line again, paste it, and we're just gonna change the one to a two. All right, so that should be that. Um, the other thing that we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to update our, um, our actual HUD. Because right now, let's have a look here. Let's go back into Unity. And let's look at this first. Um, this still says new text, so let's change that. Let's change it to 200. Okay, And we're gonna make that dynamic a little later. Maybe not in this tutorial, but maybe in the next. So um, with that, let's save our scene and save our project. And let's press play. Let's see what happens. Well, that was weird. <clears throat> All right. There we go. That worked beautiful. Ah, and we die. Let's do this again. Let's see if we can get this guy. Aha! <laughs> All right. So our scores are incrementing, but actually, let's take this and move it back. All right. So our scores are incrementing, <clears throat> but they're not reflecting in the HUD. Oh, and uh, we made a mistake here. We have one up. We need to change this to two up. All right. So um, what we need to do is we need to update this HUD. All right, so we're gonna go into our uh, game board script. And I'm gonna scroll up. And uh, remember how we got rid of that update method because we said we were never going to need it? Well, we are going to need it. <laughs> so we're going to do public, um, or actually no, uh, just void update. And we're going to create another method and we're going to call this one void um, update UI. And from the update method, we're going to call update UI and for update UI we are going to um, just update our UI elements so um, the variables that we created so player one score text dot text equals um, player one score dot two string uh, player Two score text dot text player two score dot two string. Okay, so we've got that. Um, what else do we need to update in the UI? So those are the two scores. Um, give me a quick second here. What else did I do? We need to do the lives. So um, if Pac-Man lives equals three, else if Pac-Man lives equals two, else if Pac-Man lives equals one. <clears throat> so Pac-Man has three lives. Then we want to show our um, player lives three image so player lives three dot get component dot um all right get component sprite renderer dot enabled equals true you know what let's 
just do it like this. This is much simpler. <laughs> player lies three dot enabled equals true. Um, player lives two dot enabled equals true because we want that one to show up too. So because if we've got three lives, we want both of these images to show. And if we've got two lives, we don't want player lives three image to show. So we do player lives three dot enabled equals false and player lives two dot enabled equals true. And if the player is down to one life, we don't want any of the images to show. So player lives three dot enabled equals false and player lives two dot enabled equals false. All right, so now let's see if we can get uh, some stuff to update on our UI. Let's go back to Unity and press play. All right, so our score should start updating as soon as we start consuming pellets, just like that. Awesome. Okay, so our score is updating. Now it should go up by 200, which it did. And now I'm going to let myself get killed by a ghost. And when you, uh, you'll see that it restarted and the, the images, one of the images disappeared, which is awesome, which is exactly what's supposed to happen. And we'll die again. And once the game restarts, the other image will disappear. There we go. Perfect. So, everything is working just like it should. There's nothing else that we really need to do at this point. Um, the next tutorial, what I'll probably do is... Uh, wow, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do in the next tutorial. Oh, um, maybe we're going to uh, add in the, uh, the high score, because right now the high score is a static 10,000. So we need to make that so that it's uh, not static, so that it's actually dynamic and it's taking it from a saved um, uh, preference. So the other thing that we might do is uh, we're going to go and look at our score that, um, that we assign to Pac-Man when he consumes a ghost because in the game you can be on a streak of points, right? So like, uh, let's say you get the ghost to be in a frightened mode and then you start uh, eating them one at a time. So every time you eat a ghost, if it doesn't go back to um, regular mode, you get double the points. So you start with 200 and then for the next ghost you get 400, the next one you get 800, and then the next one I think you get 1600. If you can get four ghosts, then you get more score. So, and that's what it's all about is, is the score in this game. So uh, I'm going to leave you guys with that. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, comments go down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and I almost forgot. There is a uh, shout out to uh, Mark O'Keefe, who has generously um, actually pledged on my Patreon page, uh, which I find awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Mark. I, I really appreciate the donation from you. Um, you guys, I, I appreciate everything you do. We've hit over 700 subscribers now, which is awesome. On our way to 1,000. Can't wait for that. I'll uh, see you guys next week. Take care.